to hair dry or not to hair dry is the question. Are we going to damage our watercolours if we use a hair dryer on them? Are we going to flatten the colour, lose its vibrancy? Or is the hair dryer a really good tool for those of us who aren't quite as patient as we could be? So that's what I'm going to look at this week. And thank you to Trish Mirabelli, I hope I've said that surname right, I don't think I have, who asked the question. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a professional watercolour artist based in Berkshire. And every week I bring you a tip, trick or technique that I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week it's how to use a hairdryer without damaging your watercolours. Let's look at some of the potential pitfalls of using a hairdryer. Say I put on an area like this and I think, right, I need to get that dry get my hair dryer and give it a good blast. Yes, that immediately shows the problem. You can end up with an explosion. But there's a bit more of a subtle problem going on as well. This time I'm going to be a bit more careful. I haven't got any explosions on this one, but what I have got is some un uneven drying. Even if you're moving the hairdryer around pretty regularly, maybe at the corners and, or edges, you're going to get a little pooling of colour and you'll end up with areas that are drier and wetter and potentially you will end up with some hard sort of tide mark. Another problem you might encounter and we've decided to for whatever reason oh look at that pink go do some wet in wet work and we've got this lovely feathering and beautiful effects and you think oh yeah yeah that's super just what I wanted now I need to try it so I can do the next thing and you can see that we've lost those beautiful feathery marks. I thought I was being careful, but I've flattened out some of those marks. Let's just do this. It's still really wet. And say I was a little gung-ho with my hairdryer here, this paint could move everywhere. to be a little bit scientific about this and actually see what happens. I've mixed up some of that Quin Magenta and I'm just going to lay a flat wash. The paper I'm using is just some scraps of bocking food that I've got. Let's cut that in half. I'm going to put that to one side to dry naturally and then I am going to gently dry this piece of paper. And what I would suggest when you're drying, rather than using quite a powerful hairdryer, that's uh, I think 2,200 watts, I would suggest a little travel hairdryer. This is only, I think it's 700 watts. So it will stop your inclination to blast your painting. The other thing is that I would actually let the paint settle. Let it set into the paper a little before you start drying. The wash is still definitely wet. Hopefully you can see the shine on that. And now I'm going to gently dry it from, I would say, oh, 20 centimetres away. And I'm going to keep this moving so that I get as even a drying as possible. way to tell whether your watercolour is dry is to use the back of your hand and feel the wash. If it's still cool, there's water in the paper. But of course we've just heated it up so we will need to give it a few seconds to equalise to room temperature because inevitably it's going to feel warm at the moment. The other half is still wet, you can still see a shine on that. So I'm going to put those out of the way and we'll come and compare colours in a moment. So there are a couple of times when I think you will see a big difference. One of those is when you're using granulating pigments. This is Mars Black 
I hair dried one side and I left one to dry naturally and you can see the difference. Let me prove that that wasn't a fix. I'm just going to lay a wash down. Then again I'm going to cut it in half. Leave one half to dry naturally and I'm going to use my little travel hair dryer The other situation where I think you'll notice a difference, when you've mixed two pigments to make a wash. This is French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna, really standard mix that makes a great grey. Here I've hair dried it, here I've left it to dry naturally and I find the natural one far more interesting because I can see little bits of the blue coming out and little bits of the burnt sienna coming out and you can see that that grey wash. If I put less water in we'd be virtually at black so it's a really useful mix. Let's cut it in half. Again leave one half to dry naturally and we'll hair dry this half. Everything's dried, so let's come back to our scientific experiment. I think you will agree that actually there is no difference between the dried and the, the natural um, one in terms of colour, intensity. As long as you dry it carefully, as opposed to blasting it, it seems to be fine. Now, let's look at the, I'm going to turn this upside down because I that's the hair dryer and we'll keep the natural one this side just so that for, for comparison. And in this, this was the granulating Mars Black and I have to say I think I have got better granulation in the natural drying which is exactly what I expected. The difference isn't as strong as the the sample I did before I started filming typically. Uh, this is flattened out an awful lot more. Perhaps I was more careful with the drying here. And then this was my mix of French Ultramarine and Burnt Sienna and again we've got a far more exciting textured wash here than the hair dried version. But if you wanted a really flat wash perhaps you do need to um, use the hair dryer to actually get rid of any variation and granulation if you want a flat wash. However, I find this a lot more exciting. I can see, let me pull it up to you and hope that you can see that too. I can see glimmers of the burnt sienna and the French ultramarine coming through there. There are just a few other things to, uh, to say before we finish. Never hair dryer masking fluid when it's on the paper because it bakes it into the paper. Uh, PABO drawing gum is probably the exception to that. And also if you've taped down your paper with masking tape one of the ways of getting masking tape off without ripping the paper is actually to warm it with a hairdryer so there is a danger that if you've taped it down your masking tape will come loose. The third one I'd say to be careful on is UPO paper. UPO is a plastic paper, very smooth and it is literally sheets of plastic. There is a danger if you have a fierce heat tool that you would actually cockle and melt that plastic paper, maybe not melt but certainly damage it.